I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but something happened again twice in one week, and I have to be the one that tells you about it. NPM has suffered another supply chain security vulnerability. Yes, but this one is significantly larger. The previous one being the NX one, I did a video on it, but this one is in fact even larger. Debug.js was affected. That's almost 350, 400 million downloads a week. Chalk.js was also affected. I'm like 99% sure that Netflix has this in a few of their libraries. Terminal string styling done right. Also, crypto getting stolen. And of course, when all this happened, the author of the packages, yep, I got owned. Sorry, everyone. Very embarrassing. <laughs> It's a hell of a post. That's a hell of a post right there. And you can see all the different repositories that got affected by this. So what exactly happened? How was it discovered? And of course, what was the result of all this? So let's kind of go over all of that. So how exactly did this hack even occur? Well, it occurred with a phishing email. Yes, I know you, you, a lot of people right now are just like, how could you ever fall for a phishing thing? You know what? I've fallen for it. We've all fallen for it at least once. It happens. I mean... Come on, you know, you know, you know, the worst part about this is that it's some open source maintainer that is frantically trying to check so many things off his to do, gets hit with this thing and just doesn't even process it correctly and just goes, oh, oh my gosh, I got to just update this. Okay, I'm going to update this. Doesn't even look at it and bang, gets hit with a phishing attack. And man, it just happens. And you have to feel bad for the guy. You do have to feel bad because he had access to so many people's machines via his libraries. And yeah. It is pretty embarrassing. So what ended up happening is after the hacker got control of NPM for that person's account, Quix, I believe is his name, he or Kix, uh, I'm not sure if it's named after Kix, the really amazing volume filling game from the Atari days. So once the attacker got a hold of the NPM credentials, uh, the attacker started just posting a bunch of updated patch versions of the library in which contained this code right here, which this is the kind of prettified version of it, but just a bunch of nonsense all throughout here with a bunch of variables that have hex values, very confusing. And at the bottom or somewhere in the middle, there's all these wallet addresses. It's a lot of wallet. I mean, the guy's having a lot of wallet addresses. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why do you have so many wallet addresses? I don't, I don't really understand what's happening. Let me show you, it actually is, it's actually pretty clever what this guy did. So what makes this hack so dang interesting is that it didn't just simply go in your system and just try to grab everything out and just bail right away like it did with the singularity attack. Instead, this one, it would wait silently. And then when someone would run a site that has access to the dot Ethereum, which often is associated with MetaMask, it would go in there and patch a couple of the methods so that when someone attempted to do a transaction, the destination address would be replaced with an address that was closest matched to one of those many that he had within the source code. And how he did that many in the source code, he used an algorithm called the Levenstein distance. If you're not familiar with it, it's able to calculate the distance between two words, how many replaces, how many inserts, or how many deletions it would take to get one word to another word. Sometimes it's used in kind of spelling correction algorithms to give you like how close you are to other words. And so it finds something that kind of looked like the destination address. It was actually pretty close. And then it would send that one off and put that in the confirmation box. So when you pressed accept, it would actually be sending it to one of his, not your intended destination. Pretty dang clever. Of course, this was all discovered when an error happened. Fetch is not defined. Perusing through the code, found the offending code and bam, they figured it out. Oh my gosh. But how it happened is actually more interesting is that the replacement versions, the package or the supply chain attack that happened bumped from 132 to 133 and it did it to a bunch of packages, just doing a patch version uh, upgrade. And most people's NPM, they just have a lot of their dependency set to just auto upgrade patches because you know what? Hey, patches for the boys. Okay. Patch is where you put all the fixes in. So why I could just trust that, right? There's no possible bad things that could happen if I just simply take any patch version, right? Which this actually gets us to a very interesting argument that has been kind of cycling recently. This one's from Ginger Bill called Package Managers Are Evil. This is a written form of discussion we had on my channel with, in the standup called Two Language Creators and Two Idiots. Me being one of the idiots, Ginger Bill being one of the language creators of Odin. And he makes this argument that package managers are actually evil. And the reason why is that there's this automation dependency. And dependency hells where you start relying on a package that relies on packages that relies on packages. And soon you just have so much stuff into your project 
it's really hard to understand your project as a whole and what it's actually running. So his whole argument is based around this idea that dependency hell is a real thing and package managers effectively just foist you into hell much, much faster. And we all willingly choose that hell and eventually things get bad. I think that a lot of people specifically, if you're grown up in like the web world, this idea of package managers being evil is probably just like so foreign or so weird. You're thinking, no, there's just no way. Why would you ever not want a package manager? But I do totally get this idea that package managers just bring in a whole necessary function of risk. Because with the NX hack, a lot of people were had not by having NX, but by having something that needed NX. A lot of people were hit on these kind of third party or third transitive dependencies that you just end up bringing in, you don't even realize it. And to kind of like drive the point home, there's an interesting thing. If you start a new Rust project and you just do very little things with the internet, you start a server, do a little JSON parsing, do a little storing in a database, you'll end up having something like 70 to 100 different dependencies. All just simply to process a bit of JSON, make a little bit of squeal, thrown in a little bit of HTML. And so his whole argument is that the language should be much more batteries included. That's why Go, it's much harder to get to dependency hells because Go is largely a complete language or a batteries included language, despite it having several flaws. It's just a very interesting argument. And in this case, it's actually a very apt argument because these people who got pwned got pwned by a patch dependency and things just automatically brought it in. Their automation kicked in. Hey, don't worry, we got this. A lot of people were third-party dependencies. They're working on a TUI that uses chalk for coloring. They don't even know that they're using that. They're just, they're just using the library. Boom, got hit with a third-party dependency supply chain attack. You're probably asking yourself, with 700 plus million downloads a week, that's 100 million downloads a day. That is an enormous amount of downloads per second there must have been a ton of people that got affected by this, right? Being the largest supply chain attack in all of history, they got a total of five cents. Yeah, you heard it here, folks. Five entire cents. And potentially, I know, this is where it gets real terrible, $20 worth of meme coins. With 588 USD of trading volume over the last 24 hours. Now, there subsequently could be other people that have been involved. Maybe some bigger numbers have come rolling in over the last little bit of time since these numbers were calculated. But nonetheless, which just goes to show, probably should have just stolen environment secrets. You probably would have got like a million dollars in open AI tokens you could have probably used and then been able to do something with. The terrible takeaway. Why would I even suggest that? Why, why would I even do that? Why would I even want? You wouldn't, you don't, don't do that actually. Don't, don't do that. Okay. Don't, don't do that move. The good news is, is that not a lot of people were affected by this. So, Hey, that's pretty awesome. But dang, you know what the real cost is? The real cost is going to be the thousands of hours that are needed to clean up this mess. And hopefully the big takeaway here is that the automation of dependencies, maybe it's a bit more dangerous than you realize. Maybe you're more vulnerable than you understand, because it may not even be the things you rely on, but the things you rely on that rely on other things that get you. And not only that, but you got to remember, it's not just that you're vulnerable to these packages that are out there. You're vulnerable based on who's running them. And now you have like 50, 60 people who have access in some sort of sense to your machine because they're releasing these packages in which you rely on to make stuff. And so if one of these many people throughout the world get compromised, you incidentally will just get compromised. So perhaps Ginger Bill is right. Perhaps package managers are in fact evil. Or we'll probably just keep acting the way everyone has been acting thus far, which is nobody actually cares. And people just keep using it. And if they get had, they get had not realizing that there is going to be a future at some point where some supply chain attack is going to cause some company to go out of business because they are able to do such damage and be able to thieve at such a level that it actually really did hurt and destroy things. So hey, like subscribe. If you like this video, that'd be awesome. Press the like button, do the whole commenting thing. I know these aren't live reacts, and, and I know a lot of you really missed the live reacts, but right now I just have to keep on taking care of my voice, so this is just going to be the reality for the next little while. The name is the Primogen.